man down, please blow the man down. To be photographs over the different times that I visited Madeira. Uh, sea scenes are lovely to do and we're going to do a big wash. Now a big wash is something it either goes right or it doesn't and so don't worry about it but I will tell you a few secrets that will help to sort of improve the chances of everything going okay. So the thing is to wet the paper well. Now I'd like to have a little band of white I think going through that rigging because that will look quite nice. Go around the ship and we're going to keep our washes fairly sort of loose and let's start with a little bit of sunshine. So I think a little bit of raw sienna might be quite nice to pop going through there. That's, that just sort of makes it warm and this is going to be quite dark so that will lighten it. Um, then I'm going to go for a French ultramarine blue. So that's French ultramarine blue going in a dab of burnt amber just so that it's not bright blue. And then get that to go in quite quickly. So I'm just going to take the sea and the sort of the sky into one another and I might have to go back into that with some white gouache because I'd like to keep some of those bits white that can come sort of through like that now <clears throat> that's working quite well now I have to work very quickly let's add a little bit of light red just sort of in a few places And I think a bit of bright blue at the top. Now let's just thicker French ultramarine blue and balance that at the bottom there. Now the thing to do now is just to leave that alone and let it dry on its own. Don't be tempted to fiddle around. If you're not quite happy with stuff, sometimes it's better just to leave it. So we'll give that half an hour and then we'll take another look at it go through a big brush to get some of this on. There's a lot of stuff there. Now the first thing actually I'm going to do, I'll use my smaller 16 brush and just put in some of these shapes in raw sienna because that's going to just break up that area quite nicely. And there's something here, I think they're people that I can't quite see but I'm just going to give that a little bit more colour in case we get a bit over enthusiastic a little bit of red can go in there because I want that definite shape that's really nice this is actually one of the better photographs that I've managed to to get of um, the Marie Salou right, so now with my big brush let's go for a really lovely dark let's go for Prussian blue Nice and thick and gungy and some sepia. Now most of that is in dark but that side there is just a little bit lighter so I think we use two brushes let's go wild. A little bit of water into that mix that I've made and this we're exaggerating it quite a lot that's what the light's really hitting that there then it gets slightly darker 
as we come through to here to so just a slightly thicker mix. I'm going to make that bluer with the Prussian blue to make it more interesting. And I'm not worrying too much about the shapes, no, we're just filling in. It's going to be nice and loose. There's a bit of a shape going there that will break that up quite nicely. And it gets darker as we go down to the bottom, so we will bring some of the very thick dark over in a minute. Right now, let's go for very thick, so hardly any water on your brush. Dab out the water. Thick, gooey paint. French. Uh, we're going for Prussian blue and sepia. That's one, two, three, four. It's a bit of shadow, that was probably good to get that in there. And let's bring this down. That runs a little bit, it's quite a soft edge there, so that won't matter. Dry brush marks. Wow, that's lovely and gungy and dark shape. And that sort of comes down there quite dark. It's not so dark there, but this bit is. And just catch it's a bit of white. See there? I don't want too many white bits in there it's there's a little bit of something dark here comes out a little bit so we can always tidy up that a little bit more later now anything else that we've got so we've got this dark area behind here i'm going to leave a little bit of a white line around there to make more sense. And there's lots of people on board there, but I'm not going to draw in so many people. And then a little bit of the Prussian blue water down for where the light's hitting that. It's just sort of catching there. Okay. You need a little bit of something here. All right, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to do some red cells because the white, I think, will just disappear a little bit and we're going to be quite dramatic. So artistic license, alizarin crimson. Let's get the sort of paler wash on to start with. There's lots of lovely folds in that. That sort of comes around like that. And you've got a gap and then the same here oh, they're just amazing this was probably one of the best photographs I've managed to get of this ship oh, that doesn't matter if that's a little bit darker And then there's some darker shapes in that. So whilst that's still wet, let's just put a little bit of the more runny, darker tones. And then we make those more definite later. Underneath, that's quite dark there. Oops. I just love this. It's so unusual to find such a lovely um, composition to paint. Now let's just let that dry for a little while and then we'll focus on the rigging. Now the key to this working is not to overwork it and there is a danger because we see so much in it but what I'm going to do now is just with that dark let's just pop in the crow's nest. Dry brush marks. Okay, 
like something dark here. And then I'm going to go for a burnt umber, I think, for the main mast. And then we can add darker bits to that later. It's quite a thick mast. And where does that come through? There's a sort of box under there. I do need to get it in the right place. Just the thinner one that goes over the cells. Obviously through there, and then we can oh, this is it's easy and it's working really well. Now I've got another darker one there, but let's just pop that bit in there. And some of that comes through there. So if I put the main shapes in, something there that's dark, we can't see what it is, so just, just paint in what you can see. And the same here. But that still gives us that wonderful shape. And there, I'm just having to be a little bit careful because I'm aware that my lines aren't always going to be straight. behind that one but in front of that one and then a little bit of um, French ultramarine into this one same brand and that's I think that looks like some sort of cell it's difficult to tell and if you can't tell just paint what you see I've got a little bit of a coloured flag so a bit of Lemon yellow with a little bit of any blue. Let's just pop that in. And a little bit, I think, of cadmium red because that's a little bit brighter. I'm really really happy with how this is coming on now I think before I put the main rigging on I'm going to get some of these dark shapes into the cells so I'm just going to go with some very thick alizarine crimson because I don't really want it to be too dark let's see if this is going to be dark enough so that definite shape there that sort of comes up So we've got the soft edges as well as the hard edges. And that gives it a shape. This is, yeah, I'm not happy with that. I, don't, I think any darker would have probably been a little bit too harsh. Just beautiful these folds. Always wanted to go on this ship and I've never managed to. A little bit of shadow under there. Right, now before I forget, I'm going to put just a little bit of reflection of that blue underneath. So just a little bit watered down because it's a dark ship. The reflection is going to be slightly lighter now we don't want to do loads oh. and i'm going to get some white into that as well in a while that would just sort of anchor that down very nicely and it's sort of coming together on its own Right, any definite little marks that are dark that we can see on the mask, we will pop in now before we put in all the rigging. So like there's a little bubble there. Being careful not to overdo it. Mm. Yeah, that's probably it. There is a dark line. 
of shadow, we make the most of that because there's not too much shadow. And the same that side. Just makes it look a little bit more 3D. Underneath. Wow. Now that's white on the picture, but I'm going to do it dark because it won't show up obviously if we do it white. I think that's the only very loopy one I can see. So let's get our credit card. Now we don't have to do every single one, but we'll start with the main one. So the lovely thick Gunji Prussian Blue sepia mixed up and then just run that along there and let's do there's a ladder here I think that comes right down so let's get that in don't have to do every single line and then there's another one that sort of goes that way And then use the smaller edge of the card if you want to have more control. Um, that goes to there. Now you can see we're doing different colours, but I don't think that matters. Goes up to there. And that's giving us a sort of random line. The danger is that I'm going to do too much. That comes from there. They don't go all the way, that's fine. It's a very dark one here. Down to there. There's so much actually going on. Um, some of these need to go in. to load my brush again with dark so it goes straight up there I was just looking carefully if there's anything that's important but I really don't want to put too much in and I think that's probably other than this little one that's got to the point where that's enough rigging. Right now, let's do some of the people. So I think raw siennas, we've already got that in there. Might be a good colour just to, a little bit of anything dirty in the palette. Got such a sepia for the hair. No, we're not doing great detail. Just fit in that space, but I want to keep that line showing a little bit there. And that's on the pole. It's just it's dark now. Just a little bit of squinting. Anything else that needs to go in? There's some dark shapes. So it comes down. across there and how much of this anchor do we put the dark shapes in on the outside just also do as much as you feel happy doing and it's a little bit darker as we came down to the bottom I think I'm going to get a little bit of white into here, but only because that seems a big area of dark. So my white gouache, let's just try and just make up a bit of a line through there. And I think there's something that comes. Yeah, that's, it's, it's only a little bit, but 
I think that does work quite well. And then I'm going to add some white to the sea. Well, luckily we have kept quite a lot of the white. And then I'm going to get my toothbrush and I'm going to do some splattering. We so like splattering. So, nice and thick, not too much water on the toothbrush. So we want this white to show up when we splatter. And just gently along the bottom of the boat. And that's quite good that that's gone on there because that's also broken that up a little bit. So back to that white that sort of comes around there and down here. And what we will have underneath the white is a darker shadow. So I'm just going to go back into that Prussian blue and the sepia and just a little dark shape of underneath the waves. Just tease that out a little bit. dark waves down there too. Yeah I am so pleased with this reference photograph definitely one of the better ones that I've taken of this ship and I it's easy to paint so I really hope don't think difficult think just the definite shapes that you see and just go for it quickly don't worry about it and you'll just have great fun so I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Oh, blow the man down, please blow the man down. Beware.